Assalamu alaikum everybody. This is the Arabic with Sam YouTube channel and I pray that you guys have subscribed and I also pray that you're very very well and in the best of health. So welcome to episode two in uh, this little series that we're doing every Wednesday where we just go over a little Arabic book. Um, as we've said in many episodes you know there there are many many resources out there for students to learn the Arabic language and we just put together this little series to help you decipher which books will be useful for you and which ones will not because there are literally thousands out there and it's also difficult sometimes when you have a particular objective for learning Arabic, like you want to read a particular book, or you want to speak a particular dialect, or you want to propose to a particular girl, there are certain types of Arabic that you need and certain types of Arabic that you do not. So um, so that's where we come in. You know, that's going to be my job in this little series that we're doing every 5 p at 5 p.m. every Wednesday, where we just go over another little book. So last week we covered um, the Chambers Arabic Vocabulary book. Um, you can check that out. I'll put a link to it in the description, and you just go back in this playlist and have a look at it if you missed it. But um, without further ado, we're going to have a little look at the cornerstone of... Um, of Arabic students' books um, for students who study Arabic who live here in the West. This is the Hans Ver or Hans Weher dictionary. Um, this is probably one of the very first books that Arabic teachers recommend that their students buy very, very early in the course. And it was definitely the very first Arabic dictionary that I ever owned. Or well, probably the second, actually. Um, but, but the first one when I started studying Arabic seriously. And, um, you know, it is available in, in, in English and it's available in German as well. And... Um, yeah, so it's important to understand that it is it is only Arabic to English dictionary. Um, you know, a pr previous dictionary that I'd had was an English to Arabic and Arabic to English, but um, the Hansver dictionary is only an Arabic to English, or the German one is an Arabic to German one. And um, and the way that it is organised isn't... Well, it is alphabetical, but not in the way that we normally appreciate as English speakers. You know, the way that our English dictionaries are organised, and um, beginner's Arabic... GCS, beginner's Arabic dictionaries, rather, are organised, is that you take the first letter, so if we take a word in Arabic like... If we take a word like... Um, aqlam, okay, you take the word aqlam, on, okay, means pens, right? You know, there are some dictionaries of, of Arabic, which are usually more suited towards beginners, where you would first look up the first letter, the Hamza, yeah, over the Elif, um, and then you would look up the next letter, the Qaf. But, um, but, Arab, but bigger Arabic dictionaries can't be organised like that, because so many of the patterns in the Arabic language begin with an Elif, or so many of the patterns in the Arabic language begin with a meme. So it would mean that like half the dictionary is made up, made up with words that begin with an Elif and a meme. Yeah, So it's just not a, an appropriate way to organise a dictionary like the Hans Ver dictionary, and then more advanced ones after that. And it's not the way that dictionaries in Arabic are organised. Like if you look at any of the big Arabic language dictionaries, like Taj al Aros, Lisan al Arab, or even smaller ones, like um, Al Misbah al Munir, then um, those dictionaries are always organised in some way to do with the root letters rather than the alphabetical order of the word itself. So in the Hans Ver dictionary, the first roots that you would see. Um, you know, will be ones that begin with where the root begins with elif. You know, so you'll have, you know, you know words like ab and and um, you know abada and abara and and ethela and eta words like that and ahada and ethela. Yeah, so it's talking about the root letter rather than the actual Arabic word itself, right? It will always begin like that, and then out of that root word it will kind of take out all of the different words and vocabulary and verbs from that root letter, right? And it, it is it is helpful to have a bit of an understanding of the Orientalist or the Western approach to learning the Arabic language when you're approaching it, because it utilises verb forms, for example. So if you were to have a verb like, a root letter like, like, seen, lam, and meme, yeah? First, you would see the entry, selima, yeah? The verb selima, like to have peace or to be peaceful. And um, and then it'll have the Roman numerals for the different forms of verbs. And when we learn Arabic in a Western tradition, like I did, like at Western University, you'll learn like form one is selima, form two is selema, form three is selema, form four is eslema, form five is tasellema, form six would be tasellema, form seven would be like in in selema, form eight would be estelema, form nine doesn't exist for that verb. Um, so, some of those others don't exist for that verb either, but form 9 definitely wouldn't. And then form 10 is steslema, which does exist and is a verb. So um, so that's how it would be organised. You'd have the Roman numerals for each of those. But um, people who study Arabic in more of a classical um, sense or from like an Islamic perspective or in the Arab world probably wouldn't learn those. You learn, you just learn the pattern. Yeah, you just learn. 
you just learn, you know, awzan al afal you just learn the patterns of the verbs, right, rather than numbering them. But it is tailored towards people who learn Arabic in a, in kind of a Western environment. So a lot of the vocabulary and the language and stuff in there is about that. So, um, to expand on that, it is, um, it is all literary Arabic, right? Like there's nothing in dialects in here. It is all entirely fusha. It is all entirely literary Arabic. Um, good. Yeah. So, so out of every single root letter, you know, three letter root or four letter root, um, you know, you will have all of the entries for it. So all of the verbs and all of the nouns are derived from those root letters, um, which makes it an amazing resource. Um, you know, but it does it does require the skill that you students know how to derive the root letters out of certain words. So you do need a certain understanding of of patterns, right? You need a certain understanding of what we call sorf, um, of like the patterns of words. So if you were to see a word a word like if you were to see a word like miftah, miftah, yeah, you could look at that and you could say, well, the meme on the beginning a meme on the beginning is usually part of a pattern rather than the root letters, right? So we can probably we can probably uh, we can probably say that, that isn't part of the root. The fa, I'd say it's part of the root, and the ta is probably an elif is never a root letter. Okay, elif alone can never be a root letter. It can be with a hamza on it, like a hamza can be a root letter, but elif itself cannot be a root letter. So it can't be that, and then the ha on the end. So we'd have a fa, ta, and ha, and then you'd look up fa ta ha in the dictionary if you wanted to understand that word. So to be able to deduce that and to be able to do that, you do need to have some appreciation of, of different patterns of words in the Arabic language. But um, yeah, but just as a side note, for students on, on, on the Arabic in 60 Steps program, you know how to do that. After about lesson, after about sort of step eight or nine, you know how to do that anyway. So um, yeah, so it's a, it's a really, really good good idea to get hold of one of these dictionaries. And it is important for students to have have a dictionary as well as whatever course they're on, because most courses that I've ever encountered in my life sometimes just sneak in bits of new vocabulary here and there. And it's good for you to have your own means of, um, you know, of, of finding out those new bits of vocab and stuff. So this, this was always within arm's reach of me throughout my entire degree. Served me right up until the end of my degree. Um, you know, you probably, you actually, you probably don't need a dictionary more advanced than this until you get to master's level. Arabic, I would say. Um, you know, for just degree level Arabic, for everything Arabic to English. Um, this was fine. I mean, it was only after I graduated when I moved on to Arabic to Arabic dictionaries. So, um, yeah, so it was serious business. You know, if you're a serious Arabic student, it's a really, really good purchase. So they're always, they're almost always hardback. There's two kind of main prints that I've seen. There's this one, and then there's one that's like, then there's one that's in green as well. Um, there are other dictionaries that are green as well, but, um, but yeah, there are a couple of different kinds of prints for the Hansver dictionary. And they are available on Amazon as well. I think I got hold of this for like £15 in Regent's Park Mosque. Um, yeah, in central London, in Regent's Park Mosque, in their bookshop, they have these. And that's where I got hold of my one. But you can buy them in the Arab world for cheaper. Um, you know, I remember there were some students who went to Syria and bought them for the equivalent of like £5. You can get hold of them on Amazon. In fact, I wrote down what the prices were. So it's usually about £15. Um, but on Amazon, they're a little bit more expensive. So £17.10 was um, was the cheapest one that I found on Amazon. But um, yeah, but they are available a little bit cheaper than that. You can get them secondhand if you're prepared to have them a little bit ripped like mine is. So... Uh, that's pretty much everything I could think of for the Hansver Dictionary. Um, um, I think that's pretty uh, pretty detailed about how to use it and why you might want to use it and what sort of student it is right for. Um, yeah, so that's everything for this video. If there is anything you'd like to ask about this particular resource, then please don't hesitate to just put some questions in the comments below or you can DM me on Instagram. Obviously, all of my handles on every single platform is Arabic with Sam, just at Arabic with Sam, Twitter, my podcast, my LinkedIn. LinkedIn wouldn't be at Arabic with Sam, it'd just be my name, Sam Burr. But um, yeah, I'm on LinkedIn, obviously here on YouTube, obviously on Facebook, um, Snapchat even, um, Arabic with Sam Snapchat as well. So we're on, I'm on all of those platforms. And if you have any questions about it, then uh, you can just ask away. Um, if you do want to get hold of it, you know, I'm going to say this at the end of every uh, at the end of every single one of these videos is that please use my link uh, to get hold of the book because Amazon will give me a little commission if you buy it through mine. So if you do want to buy it anyway, then you might as well buy it in a way that helps to support your favorite YouTube channel in the entire world. My channel.
So, um, yes, that's everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to let me know by liking and sharing this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to be here on Friday, actually, for our next phrase of the week. Every Friday at the moment on the channel, we're doing a new phrase um, every single week. So we're actually going to utilize a few of the phrases from the book that we did last week. Um, we talked about a, a, a vocabulary a book uh, last week, and we're going to use some of the phrases that are used in that book as well in the series. So it'd be a good opportunity for you to see the kinds of phrases that are used in that book and stuff too. All right, guys. End of the video. See you guys next week. Next week, we are going to be talking about... Which one are we going to do next? So these are the books that we're doing. Um, these are the books that we're doing over the next three weeks. I think next week we're doing um, the Middle East phrase book. I think that's the one that we're doing next week. But after that, the next two weeks, we're going to have the Visual Arabic English Dictionary. And we're going to have a Modern Literary Arabic by David Cowan as well after that too. But next week, Middle East Arabic. That's the one that we're going to be covering. So I'll see you next Wednesday for another Arabic book corner. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.